Hello, Sweetwater County. I'm Kelly McGovern, Superintendent of Schools for Sweetwater County School District Number 1. We know that it's the middle of our weekend today, but we have some really important information that we would like to share with you. Inside this video is some information that will be going before our Board of Education on Monday evening beginning at 6 o'clock. I invite all of you to take a look at the attached document. It is the presentation that I will be sharing along with Scott Duncan, Dan Celeroli, and Nicole Bolton. It provides information about transitions that may be taking place as we enter into the 21-22 school year. I wanted to share with you some highlights from the presentation, um, some very important things, and then please feel welcome to read through that and then again tune in on Monday evening. The first one is on slide three, if we could go there real quickly. It actually frames the purpose for some of the changes that we will need to make um, moving forward for Sweetwater number one. This slide talks about the adjustments in student enrollment and our building capacity, particularly in our K-6 schools. As you can see on this slide, we have four years of student enrollment data. The first three on the top of the slide show um, what it looks like with the numbers from the start of school in August and then as we end in May. What is the striking difference is the current school year that we are in. And that area, that big gap, is actually what we are facing when we talk about student enrollment and building capacity. On slide seven, um, very quickly for you, is um, some important things about why those changes would be taking place. And again, more, much more detail will be shared on Monday evening. But we um, are very fortunate in Sweetwater One that we would not need to pursue a reduction in force. Um, that's been uh, very difficult. We've worked through that all year long and we'll need to continue to do that due to the uncertain revenues that not only our state faces but also our district through um, legislative cuts and then also the loss in student enrollment. As you work through the options, there are six of them and they're titled options A through E and they involve um, changes to our system. The first notable change is the recommendation to move our fourth grade students into Pilot Butte and Eastside. And that would require those buildings to be reconfigured as not five, six buildings that they currently are, but they would become four through six schools. Also, that leaves some other changes that are outlined in the options A through E that involve Overland, Westridge, Stagecoach, North Park, Sage, Desert View, Walnut, and Washington School. Washington School, as you may know, is the, it's one of our district schools, but it is the building that houses our Head Start program. The Head Start program would not close whatsoever, but there are some recommendations for the Washington School building itself, and then also some of the other buildings. The highlights within those different options, um, another, for example, includes the recommendation for closing Overland Elementary at the end of this school year and moving the building into Sage Elementary. The other options um, for consideration involve the other K through four elementary schools, and you'll be able to see what those options entail working all the way through. They're not necessarily closing all of those buildings, so please know it would be very important to look through that presentation, and then again, also tune in on Monday evening for further um, explanation. We know it's very important to get the information out to all of you um, and also how important it is we'll do our best to try to keep school staff and kids together as slide seven talks about. 
Um, we know that we may have to reassign some of our district staff, but we want to do what's right for our staff and for our students. Another very important point is keeping our class sizes under the current policy allotments that we have, which are 23 for K through 3 and 27 for grades 4 through 12. Also, it's important to know that these are options that are under consideration for our Board of Education and that those decisions would be made on Monday evening by our school board. The two priorities that really go behind all of the options and the information within the presentation involve taking care of our students, taking care of our staff, doing what's best for them, and really job preservation as much as we possibly can. Also very important to say is that there are positions in our outlying schools, which are Farson, Eden, and Wamsutter, that would be affected, but they are absorbed through retirements of staff. Those buildings, of course, would stay open, but they would also be affected through um, some retirements. So again, um, before I turn this over to Mrs. Bolton, um, I really encourage all of you to please take a look at the presentation for the information. And again, it will be shared on Monday evening at 6 o'clock as all of our school boards are streamed live. And then also um, in the parent square that's coming out to you with this link, um, it will have the link for any public feedback or comment that you would like to provide for Monday's meeting. And that is the same link that I share out um, each month for when the board meetings are coming before you. So same link for opportunities for your public comment. So with that, um, thank you for being a part of Sweetwater One. And we want to do best as we move forward in this very difficult time. So thank you. Hello. I'm Nicole Bolton and I am the Human Resource Director with Sweetwater School District Number 1. I would like to add on to what Superintendent McGovern had just spoke about and let you know that each of the options that the board have to consider all have short-term and long-term goals. There has been a lot of thought and effort that has gone into all of these options for the board to consider. The nice thing about all of those options as well is that we will not have to reboundary any of the schools. So if a school is closed and moves into another school, that entire student population will get to go to the new school together. And that will help with the transition. I want to assure everybody that we have thought through the effects of the pandemic. And we understand that one of those effects is the decrease in enrollment and that there is a chance that it will be coming back. So we know that the question and concern of what if the enrollment comes back, how are we going to be able to um, take these students in and we're going to be able to put them in a classroom. How all of these options are arranged, we still have room not only in all of the schools to add classrooms if needed, but we also have room within the existing classrooms to bring in more students if the enrollment increases. The good thing with all of these options is hard as, a, as an adjustment as it will be, is that the district at this time was able to avoid a reduction in force for our staff, which would have been devastating to our district. And we were also able to avoid closing or removing any programs or things that we are able to offer to students K-12. We will still be able to offer the smaller class size and all of the programs and extracurriculars that we have had. This has been a tough year, and these are very tough decisions moving forward. With the drop in enrollment, we are bringing forward solutions that will best meet the current fiscal situation that the district faces and try to limit the negative impact on our community. We encourage everyone to please log in to watch the board meeting on Monday night at 6 p.m. The board meeting can be found on the district YouTube channel. Have a good weekend.